Welcome all. This is out. CAN or controller area network is two wires high speed communication link used to connect devices. And one of these applications is used as a robust vehicle bus. So all the different issues and controller within the car, they communicate with each other and exchange information using a single bus. We will go through practical demonstration how this is happening. But before the practical part, let's go through few concepts about Canvas. Canvas is based on two wires communication where we have every node is connected to the same bus and the data is flowing using a differential voltage between high CAN cable and low CAN cable. Uh, these two wires are twisted pair cables with two 120 ohm resistors at both ends uh, of the bus. The function of these two resistors is to kill the signal reflection effect uh, by creating an impedance matching condition uh, in the bus. And we will see the reflection effect during the practical uh, demonstration. This is how the differential voltage CAN signal looks like. Uh, where CAN high and CAN low waveforms mirror each other at 2.5 volt. So CAN low switches from 2.5 to 1.5 volt and CAN high switches from 2.5 volt to 3.5 volt. Uh, logic 1 is rep represented when both lines are 2.5 volt uh, potential and logic 0 is represented when both lines at maximum differential voltage. At the transceiver receiving circuit, uh, it is going to detect the differential signal and generate equivalent logic level, which is going to be fed to the microcontroller uh, in this case. And we are going to examine this as well. The special thing about CAN protocol with this protocol, it is not important who is sending the message, but it is important what is the message itself. Uh, for example, if we talk about Modbus protocol through RS232 or RS485 link, uh, we have there the master and slave concept. And sending the address of the nodes is very important for the message to reach destination. But this is not the case at all uh, with CAN network, where the priority of the message is driving the bus. Uh, let's go through the CAN message frame uh, to understand uh, this concept. One thing to understand, every node in the CAN network can transmit message at any time and we might get multiple nodes try to transmit at same time without any problem uh, simply because all nodes respect the arbitration and identification control. The data frame start with start of frame bit then the identifier field and here where the arbitration is happening and the node with highest priority uh, message wins the network and continue transmitting its message to the end, while the rest of nodes with lower priority stops transmitting immediately and stay as listening only. And I will try to explain how this is happening uh, in details. Uh, identifier field can be 11-bit uh, standard uh, or 29 bits for extended version. The control field contain information to indicate for example if a remote frame is requested or just data frame. 
uh, also contain number of bytes transmitted in the data field. Data field contain the data itself. This data can be example temperature or pressure or uh, a speed information. Then the CRC cyclic redundancy check uh, for error detection. Uh, the transmitter will apply some calculation on the full message starting from start of frame to the data field and based on that it transmit the result value on the CRC field. Uh, then the receiving node will apply the same calculation on the received message. If the result of calculation is matching the received CRC value, uh, that's indicating no any error uh, during the transmission. Any CAN node that correctly receives the message sends an acknowledge bit at this slot. So this field is activated by receiver nodes to inform the sender of correctly received the message. Finally, end of frame uh, to indicate the end of CAN message. Now, let's understand how the message priority through arbitration and identifier works to prevent any collision while all the CAN nodes transmitting through a common bus. Uh, first, a few points need to be clear. Every CAN node it is able to read back what it is transmitting on the bus. In other words, every node keeps monitoring what's going on on the bus all the time. Uh, second point, bit 0 can overwrite bit 1 at any time, but bit 1 cannot overwrite bit 0. Therefore, bit 0 is called dominant bit, while bit 1 is recessive bit. So, our example here, we have three CAN nodes uh, trying to send a message. Uh, the first bit of the identifier for all nodes is zero. Uh, therefore, no conflict. All will continue transmitting. Uh, when they move to the second bit, node two transmits one. Uh, therefore, this is going to be overwritten by the zero transmitted from node one and node three. And the bus will stay on zero, but node two itself will pick up this condition and stop transmitting uh, anymore. Uh, now, node 1 and 3 will continue transmitting uh, the third bit, which both zero, uh, no conflict. But at bit 4, node 1 transmitted 1, uh, which is going to be overwritten by the zero at node 3. Therefore, node 1 will stop transmitting and just stay listening. In this case, node 3 will win the bus and continue transmitting to the end of the message. Uh, the other nodes will keep monitoring the bus and when it is free, they will try to transmit again and so on. Whatever we have gone through here should be applicable to the actual setup. and. This understanding should be helpful in troubleshooting communication problems in the CAN network. Uh, here I have two nodes in this network. The ECU engine control unit and TCM transmission control module uh, connected to common CAN bus. And I will connect the oscilloscope uh, channel 1 to CAN high cable and channel 2 to CAN low cable. Let's set both channels to one volt per division and adjust both traces to zero.
And as we can see, some communication activity is ongoing in the bus. It is clear uh, can high and can low signal mirror each other at about 2.5 volt. Can high uh, waveform switches from 2.5 volt to 3.5 volt and can low uh, waveform switches from 2.5 volt to 1.5 volt. We will need now to see a 5 volt uh, signal. Uh, that's why I'll set the volt uh, to 2 volt per division. The high CAN and low CAN signals, they are fed to ECU circuit through input output pins. And this signal is going to the transceiver IC. This is the high CAN input. And this is the low CAN input signal. The transceiver will generate the result differential signal and give the output at right level, uh, which is 5 volt uh, TTL signal. This will go to the microcontroller. Uh, the microcontroller is transmitting uh, through transmit pin of the transceiver IC. And the transceiver is going to generate the two differential CAN signals. To the bus based on that. But at the same time, the signal in the bus is read back through the receiving input to microcontroller. And this is a requirement for CAN to work as explained before. At the transmission control module side, we have the same. The transceiver IC will receive both high CAN and low CAN signals and give the single voltage output 5 volt peak to peak to microcontroller. The same signal we can obtain it by connecting the oscilloscope probes directly to CAN bus and take the differential measurement. So with this analog oscilloscope uh, to get the differential voltage signal, uh, the only option is to select add option and then invert channel 2. And this is the result signal. It is the same waveform pattern we get as output of transceiver IC before. The only difference is the amplitude. Here is 2 volt and this is expected uh, differential voltage for CAN high and CAN low uh, signals. Uh, while the transceiver IC output was 5 volts. End of line termination resistors are very important to be used in this type of communication bus. This is applicable also for example to RS485 serial communication link as well. The mismatch in impedance of the loads to the transmission line and if far end of line is open and not correctly terminated then reflection of the signal will occur in the opposite direction to the original signal. These reflected waves 
can cause distortion or attenuate the signal. And all this might lead to communication problems. And this effect increases as the cable get longer. The resistors, they help to get impedance matching condition and eliminate the reflection of waves. Normally, two 120 ohm resistor used, one at beginning of bus, the second at the end side. Both will appear in parallel and the total resistor across can high and can low uh, cable will be around 60 ohm. Uh, in order to demonstrate this uh, effect more clearly, I will use longer cable to connect the ECU to TCM. Here, 120 ohm is built in in the ECU circuit. But at other end, I will use external resistor. In this check, I will scope the can high signal only for simplicity. Now, let's measure the waveform while the end resistor is out of circuit. And as you can see, these dots uh, here are indication of reflected signals. I will zoom in uh, to the waves. And this is clearly the shape of distorted signal. This portion is the result of reflected waves. Let me connect back the resistor. Yes, the resistor is in, is in the circuit and the signal just went back to the good original shape. Okay, try again. The resistor is out of circuit. The distortion came back plus some ring effect uh, is there also. And when we put back the resistor, we start receiving correct original signal. This indicates clearly the need to use the termination resistors. These are the different CAN frames currently in the bus. Uh, there is the idle state then the message uh, starts. This is one full message. Uh, and we can see one single bit uh, is taking around two microseconds. Uh, so we can say the speed of this bus uh, is 500 kilobits per second. This is the OBD2 connector uh, used to connect the scan tool. Uh, located underneath the driver dashboard uh, where we have pin 6 is can high and pin 14 is can low. Thanks for watching and all the best.